Okay, so the warm-up was looking better. Um, I like that you had some variety in your warm-up, right? Kept her moving around, kept her interested. Um, you're also showing a nicer contact through the reins. And then we want to make sure that you've got that contact there, Ren, without it becoming stiff, right? So the idea is that you have a contact that is flexible and dynamic between you and her so that for the most part, you and her, if you know, if this is your hand and this is her mouth, you guys are doing the same thing together, right? That your arm is following what she's doing. And then when you need to, you can firm up a little bit and just restrict that movement a little bit with your half halt. And it's just for a moment and then you soften it again. So that's really important when we're on course too, right? That if your hands get a little bit locked into place, then her counter is gonna be getting backed off and, and stiff. And we want her to start to develop her length of stride for her jumping round so that it becomes easy for her to go do the combination or go down the four stride line and do nice four strides without being strung out. So that's one of the things that we're not 100% of the way there yet, but that's kind of one of the things that we're working on. Okay, um, let's see here. Let's push you a little bit. 15 to 12 meters. Okay, so if you're in the corner and you're coming out to where I am now, that's about a 15 meter circle. Okay, so you can sort of imagine that right at where I am. We snug that up three more meters. There's your 12 meter circle, okay? So it's not tiny and difficult, but it's small enough that she's gonna be struggling and wanting to trot possibly, and you're gonna have to keep your legs there to keep her active, right? So we want for that circle, you're shortening her with your leg to your rein, the combination of leg and rein. I think of both hands carried just above her shoulder blades and on either side of her neck. There's a nice following arm. Good. So lengthening your two point, lower legs glued on. Good. Start to sit in. Stretch up. Now half halt and shorten her there. Circle again, run a little bit smaller and smaller in her steps. There we go. Good, continue to the other long side. Long side, lengthening your two point. Small circle up at this end. Now I would circle there and just repackage her. Eyes up, lower legs, strong and on. Nice canter. Now start to sink in and close your leg. Half hold outside rein. Keep the leg, outside rein, outside rein. Keep the leg, good, she fixed it. Shorten her up. So another circle, smaller and shorter. Shorter steps. Outside aids, keep her shoulder turning. There. Good, Ren, we need to do two more of those because she starts on the circle too fast, right? Too fast and flat. So on your long side, when you start to sink in, you need to think about leg to rein. Leg needs to be there first. Come on, please. Yeah, don't let her daydream here. That was a mistake, right? So fix it quickly. Organize, bend, prepare. Good, Ren. Inside hand up a little. Make sure your hands are above the shoulder blades. And circle again, smaller than that. 15 meters or less. Yes, good. Shoulders 
Keep her shoulder turning. Good, good, good. Fight with your leg there. Don't let her think trot. Really good. Prepare to go straight after this one. And we're going to do one more like that. Now that's the circle I want to see right after your lengthen, okay? So how you set it up is going to be what makes it or breaks it. Good. Now outside rein, shorten, sit up, don't chase her, sit up. Outside rein back, and circle again. Good there, Ren. Okay, walk a sec, Ren. So just come towards me a bit here so I'm not yelling at you. Um, I just want to make sure I'm being clear about the when she's disunited the temptation when she's disunited like that is to kick her into fixing it okay but if you tip down and kick her she just goes faster disunited so you actually need to go hey and close both legs and then outside rein back and then forward okay so it's whoop forward and then what happens is because your leg is keeping her going, this stops this hind leg for a second, and then it steps through and you release. And it just gives you that little, where, and she fixes it, okay? But it's important that you're not egging her into it. You need to actually be shortening her into it. Make sense? Okay. Okay, so let's do that again. I'm not surprised at all. She'd probably do the same thing with me to get disunited but I just want to see you a little more tall fixing it. She goes to United as a bit of an evasion about not wanting to half help her shorten up, right? She doesn't want to keep those hind legs. She doesn't want to bring her hind legs any further under her body because it's an awful lot of work. It's kind of like you or I doing squats at the gym, right? Like we're asking her to do this and she's like, well, I'd rather just keep walking like this. Like, this is easier, right? But that's part of her training, is getting her body more fit to do that. And she's getting there. Okay. Same again. Nice counter, nice bending shape. Excellent. Okay, so let's just go on the right rein. I don't want to belabor this point too much. If you can do one nicely, we'll move on. So again, just that same idea of light seat, forward ride down the long side, and then starting to adjust your position, your thinking, right? You're going from the, the brain that's saying allow, 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 to a brain that starts to say and wait. Okay, and we want you to be waiting before you meet your circle so that she's already shortened up and then she's easy to maneuver on the circle. Let's get going here. Little more oomph here in the trot. Make sure that she is working as soon as you say work.
Good job, Ren. Now keep the right leg working the bend. Stretch. Right leg working the bend. One more. You did a great job of bringing her back. Yeah, there we go. We needed that bend. And she's a little bit looking to the outside. So allow your outside rein a little bit more. Give her a little more freedom to look to the right. So one more long side lengthen and short side circle. Wait, 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 wait and bend, wait and bend, wait and bend. Good. Good. Keep going. One more. That time the weight didn't happen as effectively. So then it just took a while on the circle to get the bend, right? Because you were still having to get her back first. Yeah, better bend, Ren. Okay, walk and a pat. Good. So her bend is getting more and more consistent. There's still moments, especially on the right rein, where she wants to be a little bit counter flexed. And on the right rein, I notice it that she has a bit of trouble getting her ribs out, right? She wants to lean into your leg more on the right. So that's probably partly a strength issue. And then we just need to make sure you've done a really good job with making sure that your right rein is not tight. Okay, so that's awesome. And then we need to make sure that because she tends to do this to the right, that you're good at giving away your left rein, right? Because you need to sort of shift her a little bit and give her some space to get longer on her left side. If you're tight on your left rein, it's gonna, it's gonna create a little bit of that as well. But just something to think about. I remember um, Brian gave me a little mini lesson on, on his horse Voust uh, at Thunderbird last spring. Just, I was there and he's like, wanna get on him? And he gave me a little lesson. And I just, I was like, oh, one side is tougher than the other. And then he's like, well, you're stronger on your outside rein this way. So as soon as I exaggerated giving that away, which probably just made it even, then all of a sudden the horse was beautifully bent. And I'm like, ha, huh. so I was creating that feeling. I'm like, well, his head's over here and his hips over there, right? But it was just that my steering wheel was turned a bit that way. So sometimes it's not about your inside aids creating the bend, it's about allowing it to happen on the outside. Okay. Um, now we'll probably do a little grid here today, but I also wanted to do a couple of single fences and just work on that good canter and the good exit, like getting your canter back after you jump, like we did last lesson. So kind of like you saw Ashley do, Ren, I want you to jump this one off a left turn so you can come between those jumps. Um, I think that's probably your nicest approach. This one off the left. Then you're gonna jump this one on a bending line to the brown. Um, and probably for her, she's gonna do the seven strides quite normally. Most of the horses have been finding it a little bit tight in the seven, but we'll see how she does. So I want you to be counting your steps in here so you know how many you've done. So we'll just start with those three jumps. And 
then remember if she does land disunited that you're gonna keep your leg on and do that break on the outside and then soften. Okay, Ren, so make sure you have a plan of how you're getting to fence one. And go ahead and start that three jump course. Right away, working right away. And drop your stirrups. And keep posting. Good. And two point. Oh, good for you, that's hard. And posting. Good correction. Okay, take them back. Good, and go ahead. Make sure she's not sucking back, right? If she's doing it in the trot, she's gonna do it in the canter and the canter is the gate that you're jumping out of. So she needs to be on the money in the trot first, right? And then if she's in front of your leg trotting, when you pick up the canter, she'll be in front of your leg then. Good. Nice, Ren. Good job. Look, use your space. Good. Outside, Ren. Get your bend. Good job. Sit up, get the bend, and finish on a nice circle. Okay, Ren, tell her she's a good girl. That was a great first course. I love the canter that you set, that you started out with, because you had a good canter, you had a great first jump, okay? And then pretty good on your approach, because she over jumps a little bit and is a bit impressed by the stuff under it or whatever here, she landed a little bit far in and a little bit to the right and then kind of kept continuing there. Do you know how many steps she did? Yeah, so she did six. So we want her to do seven. So that just means landing a little straighter and then taking that extra, that extra fraction of a second before you turn. Okay, so that you get a little more curve in your line. Okay, so I want you to do those three jumps again. You're gonna be counting your steps in the line and you're changing your track. You're not changing your canter. You're just changing your track a little bit to get the extra stride in there.
Okay, now tell her she's a good girl. And you're gonna come jump that again, Ren. So go around. Good. Now here, be on your rhythm count. Leg on each beat of canter is the same. One, two, one, two, one. Good, okay, that's fine. She kind of squished to fit that in. Look for your next jump, outside rein. One, two, one, whoops. So it's a tricky thing there, Ren, because you're, you know, we don't want to be pushing always for the long one, but then she's kind of hesitating and scrambling for the last stride. So I want you to think about having a little bit firmer leg riding her to the jump here, okay? So that it's not that I want you lengthening her stride even, I just want your, the message to be go to the jump. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because she just backs off a tiny bit and then she's left with either this gap or the little ugly step. I like the trot better. Good. Good. Now think about your flowing arm and your following contact, right? So that she doesn't feel restricted in terms of covering the ground and keeping her stride flowing. Good. Now, firm leg, firm leg on. Good ride. Super ride. Good. Same feeling. Here you're bending and keeping your good rhythm. And then you're firming your leg in rhythm. Good job, Ren. So the ride you had to fence one was perfect and I'm convinced that you were doing exactly the same ride here. She just got her hind legs disunited. She got mixed up. And so that kind of is like blowing a tire, right? It kind of takes away the rhythm that you had. Okay. Now you're still getting to this jump way too quickly. Like I want you to be landing straight and then going. So I'm gonna put a little marker for you. I think that works. Let's do those three again. Actually, just wait, I'm gonna make this one an oxer. Okay, run. Now come there again, Ren. And she's just a little crooked to the left on your approach. So make sure coming out of the turn, you've got a feel of your outside rein. You've got her straight. Her hips and shoulders are lining up through the turn and go straight, 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 straight. Better. Looking. Outside rein, keep on it. 
Outside rain, leg into it, leg into it. Outside break, break the outside rain. Good, look at your jump. Power now through the turn because you lost a little bit. Now straight on your outside rein. Good ride, Ren, good. Now your next jump, look for it. Outside rein and firm up your leg. One, two, one, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good ride. Excellent, and a beautiful finish and bend through the corner there. Now finish and trot though, don't let her look right. Bend, bend, bend left, push her ribs out. There you go. Yeah, and praise her there. Good girly. Excellent. Okay, we're gonna give her a good breather. We still have half an hour left. She's already soaked in sweat. We're gonna give her a nice breather here and I'm gonna change my course a little bit. Okay, Red. So we're gonna start just straight up the grid, trotting in. Trotting in, you need to have energy with her. She sometimes trotting in if she's a little bit behind the leg, gets to the jump and just wants to trot over it, right? So she needs to be marching enough that she gets there and wants to jump. Leg on between the pole and the jump. One stride, jump out over the white. One stride, jump out over the pole. And then keep cantering straight down to the stack of poles. Once that's a jump, it's going to be three strides. Probably as a pull, it's going to be a little bit awkward. But for now, you're just going to go straight and then we'll build up the jumps as you go. Drop your stirrups. What's that? Oh. oh, okay. Yep, off the left. Good run. Hands can be a little bit wide there and just keep pushing her through the tunnel of your legs and reins. That's it. Start to look for your jump. Leg between the pole and the jump. Good. Okay, Ren, trot. Can you tell me which way she was jumping, left or right? Right, yeah. So part of that is I think you turned just a little bit early. So when you jumped in over the first one, she was slightly on an angle to the right. So just make sure you fill out that turn and you have your outside aids on to ride her straight down the grid. Okay, good, come again. I'm gonna put the last jump up. So it's one, 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 two, three. Straightness. Nice trot run. Good run. Much better on your approach. There was a couple spots, I would say over fence one and over the pole where you got tight with your arm. Could you feel that? Not sure? So when she jumped the first one, she hit your hand a little bit. Then you were good over the second one. And then in the one stride, you got half halting right when she needed to jump the pole. 
okay? So over your jumps, think of keeping your hands low and beside her neck. And that, the pull counts as a jump. In fact, I'm gonna make it a jump now. So what you're doing is you're, you're keeping, you're landing, you're bringing your shoulders back, but you're keeping your hands soft in front of you. Okay, you don't really need to half halt in the middle here with your hand, you just need to bring your shoulder back a little bit. Okay, Ren. So same good approach that you had. Thinking about your hands staying pushed low and in front of you over the jumps. Yes, beautiful, beautiful, good for you. Excellent, Ren, did exactly what I asked, perfect. I'm gonna give you a tiny bit more room in here. I was being a little bit conservative because I didn't want her to be long and flat, but I think I can spread this out to a normal three. because I don't want you to change your rod and I don't want you to have to touch the brakes in here. That's great. I want her to develop her confidence of keeping that good sort of on course jumping stride. You know, and at the beginning when we started working together, you and I, her canter was not organized enough to go on stride, right? But now she's getting a little more trained and understanding shortening better and understanding bending better and all of that, now we can work within a more normal canter because she doesn't get flustered and fast. Or if she does, you know how to fix it, right? And she'll listen to fixing it. Okay, so this time I want you to come down the grid straight in the three. Then you're gonna come around and do the grid again, and the second time you're doing a bending line to this one in four strides. Okay? So from here, she's of course gonna think she's going straight because she has every other time. So while you're jumping this one, you need to shift your eye there and a little bit of an opening left rein. And then you're landing and making sure both legs and both reins are directing her to this vertical. I think I might give you a little guide rail here. Okay, Ren. Don't like that trot. Go, go. And go back to walk and try the trot transition again. That's right. Good, keep your hands smooth. Okay, so just a little off course because we were going to do that one second. And let's just start from the beginning, Ren. So you're going to do the grid going straight in the three and then come around and then the grid and the bending line. Good girl. Yeah, give her a pat there. She's releasing some tension, so just praise her for that. Yeah, good girl.
Outside aids. Outside leg. Good. Now back to trot run and now you're doing it to the bending line. The last time though you really cut your track coming in, right? Make sure you use your space there. Okay, drop your stirrups. No stirrups for the grid. Be ready to grab some mane if you need it. Excellent. Outside leg, outside rein, half halt. Get those hind legs shortened up. Organize. Outside rein, outside rein. Keep the leg. Good, you got it. Good, Ren. Take your stairs back. Good. Okay, well done. I like that I can throw something at you and you can handle it. Awesome. Because as much as I'm kind of playing with you a little bit, because I'm doing it when you forget to check your posting diagonal, but in reality, that kind of stuff happens at a horse show all the time, right? Including in the big classes. You see people in the Grand Prix lose their stirrup and jump three or four jumps sometimes with only one stirrup or no stirrups. I remember seeing Andrea Strain jumping in the pouring rain and she was on a big stallion, Novalis, and it was pouring, pouring rain and she was, you know, Something happened in the second to last jump and she lost both her stirrups and she was clear. So she just galloped down to the last jump with no stirrups and it was this massive oxer, right? And all her tack is slipperier than anything. And she just fierce as anything and over she went and everyone's like, yeah, <laughs> like, oh my God. <laughs> it was pretty cool. But just no hesitation, right? Just like, I am going clear. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do both of those again. Um, yeah, I thought you handled that quite well. How did the four stride feel? Did it feel a little bit tight? You were probably concentrating on staying on more, but I think I'll give you a little more room here. It's nice to see because I, you know, I think like that Blaze is going to have a bit of trouble with her stride and then she's kind of proving me wrong here. She's proving that when she's, when she's in front of the leg, she actually covers quite a bit of ground. And you know, it's funny because my horse is smaller as well. When he was younger, Going on stride was quite hard for him. And as he's gotten more mature and fitter and more understanding his job, his stride length has increased. It used to be when he was younger, if I went to push him a little longer, he would just go faster, but not stretch his stride out at all. It was like a car spinning its wheels. Okay. Soften your hand. Whoops. Okay, let's do that grid again. Now praise her there for the beautiful flying change. What a good girl. She's starting to throw those in sometimes now. So that was actually a steering issue, wasn't it? Because she hit the pole. Okay, so no big deal. We'll just come again. Need to keep your, your hands smooth. So that the steering is, your hands are in front of you and a little bit wide and your legs are doing the steering to get here. Okay, if you try to micromanage with your hand, you get into trouble. So just start there again and then finish on the oxer.
smooth. Whoops. Praise her for the lead change even better that time. Go jump your oxer and then we're gonna do the grid again. Good girl. Think about your best canter. Oh, that's okay. Go jump the oxer. Okay, sorry. I said go jump the oxer and then we'll do the grid again. Because we need to be a little smoother still in the grid, right? She's still feeling like the brakes are on, so she almost did five strides there. And I only made it a foot longer, so it shouldn't make that much difference. So think here about your smooth arms, Ren, right? You want to allow her to canter. Support the canter with your leg. Excellent. Now trot and look for your grit. You're doing the bending line again with a smooth forward hand. Smooth hand, beautiful ride, beautiful ride. Outside rein and praise her for the lead change. Okay, good. Good, big pats for her. Okay, Ren, so now we're gonna jump the green vertical off the right, and then you're gonna stay inside the jumps and do like a half circle and jump the oxer. So this is a little bit of a tough track. You need to make sure that you use what space you do have. So I'm gonna walk where I would wanna ride that. You want to make sure, however, so you keep looking, checking in with your jump. You want to make sure that you don't end up over here and tripping over the poles either. Right? So use the space you have. Keep looking ahead for your jump. And then as soon as you meet that track, straight and ride straight. Okay? So the left leg is kind of closing that off and riding straight. So you're going to go one, two, back to trot. Trot your grid straight, um, canter around, trot your grid again onto the bending line, and then finish over the oxer. Okay? Now there's a good chance she might be wiggly and spooky or weird with her lead over this one, right? And you just need to stick to your plan. Look where you want to go. Keep your leg on. Keep your shoulder back. Can I do that, do that one? Yep. And then just make sure that you've got her listening through both legs coming to this oxer. Nice. Now be firm here about doing her job, right? Keeping her attention, smooth arm, strong leg, strong leg, strong leg. Good, look, sit up. Keep going, beautiful lead change. Outside leg on. Yeah, just need to make sure you hold your shoulder there. Don't get ahead of her. Now trot, stretch up, use your space. Good. Come on. Good. Good job. Get that outside leg figured out. Outside rein, half halt. Both legs on, half halt the outside rein hard. Breaks. Good. Good. Now here, loosen up your arm a little bit. Make sure she's trotting nice and forward. Good, awesome, smooth arms. Nice, Ren, good job, keep riding forward. 
and ride to the oxer. Smooth arms, straight horse. Okay, now you keep asking her to leave a stride out. You need to just settle yourself here. When she's here, we don't want her to leave the ground. So you need to go, right? Wait with leg, just like you were doing into your uh, collected circles, right? When you're this far away from the jump, you want to help her have energy and shorten her body up so she can jump over. Okay? So let's do the grid, the bending line. And that was very, very good, Ren. She just got a little close to the oxer and just touched, or the vertical, and just touched it with her hind leg. So just make sure here that your shoulder is tall. Okay, you're doing a great job with your hips bent, but sometimes your shoulders are getting a little bit out in front of you. So remember, it's tall two point, right? Hips bent, shoulders back. Okay, so grid, bending line in four, and then the oxer one more time. And then, she's good, being awesome. Good girl. Make a fuss or tell her how good she is. She's just being a star. You know, when she gets a little tired and we just want to make sure she gets her walk break and gets a nice scratch and a, and a praise and then off she goes again. Okay, so do you know what she was doing? What's that? Yeah, she was pooing, right? And that time she decided that pooing was too hard to do. Um, so yeah, it's hard when you feel your engine quitting like that. We'll come again, make sure she's alive. This is where we probably need you to ride with a stick just for the odd rare occasion when you need it. Something to happen now. That's right. Good. Hands soft. Legs strong. Good. Good. Keep going, Ren. That's just a little bit of a tired mistake. Okay, your ride was great. Shoulders back. Good job. Excellent. Okay, good for her. I don't think we need to do it again. I think she's tired. Um, and that was a great big effort, right? She tried really hard, lots of clearance over the oxer. So I don't think we need to take her through the grid one more time. That time she made a different mistake. She hit it with her front feet instead of her hind yeah. feet. Just a little bit of a tired mistake. That's okay. She's sure coming along. Good girl. So yeah, I think it would be a good plan for you to ride with a jumping bat, a little short whip. Okay, with her you don't need it all that often, but the odd time, especially like you go to pick up the trot and she kind of goes, yeah. right? And just, hey, let's go. Um, or in that situation, you know, it might've been enough to just, get the job done when you needed it done. <laughs>